I had a request to do a video on uh, chapter three. Problem number 11, B. And this is calculating, or actually it's actually asking you to estimate the PI of a particular peptide. And so the approach you take for um, figuring out the PI of a peptide is the same approach you would take to figuring out the PI of an amino acid with three ionizable groups, which I already made a video for. And the approach is you draw the peptide at its most protonated form. This is a super low pH. Cal uh, f figure out the overall charge, calculate at that point. And then calculate the change in charge as the pH rises. And this is significant because you'll be noting the pKa's of each ionizable group. And then you use the two pKa's that surround the peptide at zero charge. To figure out the PI, you just take the average of those two <clears throat> pKa's. So that's, I just wanted to lay out the approach and now I'll actually do it. So in this problem, your peptide is made up of glue, his, trip, serine, glycine, leucine, arginine, proline, and glycine. And so you look at all your ionizable groups and draw them in their most protonated form. So remember the N-terminal amino acid will have an amino group. The C-terminal amino acid will have a carboxyl group. And now you go through and you note the R groups that are going to be ionizable. You don't have to have the structures 100% memorized, but you do need to know what it looks like, protonated or deprotonated, and if it has a charge or not. So I know that glutamate has an R group that, actually instead of putting R there, I'm going to put COOH. For histidine, it has an R group. I'm not going to draw the whole thing, but I know that when it's protonated, it's positively charged. Now, I've mentioned this a couple times. Don't You don't have to necessarily memorize the amino acids that don't have ionizable R groups. I'll always give you a pKa table, which has all the pKa values. And if there's no number for pKa under R group, then you know it doesn't ionize. So that's the case for tryptophan, serine, glycine, leucine. Now arginine does have an ionizable R group. And when it's protonated, there's a positive charge there. Proline and glycine don't have ionizable R groups. So even though this peptide is kind of long, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight residue, or nine residues, 
um, <clears throat> there's only one, two, three, four, five groups that we're looking at, five ionizable groups. So in this most protonated state, the overall charge of the molecule is going to be plus three. And that's going to happen at a very low pH. And so let's say we take the solution that this peptide is in and we raise the pH on the solution. How will the overall charge change? And so as the pH rises, a group will deprotonate, and the first group to deprotonate is whichever group has the lowest pKa, because that's the low the you're going from a low pH to a higher pH. So I'm going to label some of these pKa's here to help us determine who's getting deprotonated. So I'm looking on the pKa table for glutamate, and I see the amino group for glutamate. 9.7. So I'll tell you, use the pKa values in the table, or here are the appropriate pKa values, and just you go ahead and use those. For the R group, um, 4.2. For the R group of histidine, that's 6.0. The R group of arginine is 12.5, and the carboxyl group of glycine will be 2.3. I'm going to take a moment to mention that the pKa's of these groups might change depending on the peptide and what other groups are around. Um, but just go ahead and use whatever pKa values that I provide to you on an exam. So as you raise the pH, the first pKa that you'll reach and then exceed is 2.3. And when this group deprotonates, your overall charge will now be plus 2. You raise the pH a little bit more. The group that you start to deprotonate and that you completely deprotonate as you pass its pKa's, that R group on glutamate, and that'll get half deprotonated at a pH of 4.2. And when it's completely deprotonated, as you pass that pKa value, you'll have complete deprotonation and your overall charge will now be plus one. Now raise your pH a little bit more. The next group that you'll start to deprotonate is the R group on histidine that has a pK of 6.0. And when that group gets deprotonated, it's neutral. And now the overall charge of your molecule is going to be zero. And then raise the pH on your peptide a little bit more. And the next R group to deprotonate, or sorry, the next ionizable group to deprotonate is the amino group on glutamate. And as that deprotonates, you'll end up getting a neutral group over here. And now your overall charge will be plus one. And I can keep going, but I actually don't have to. Because to get the PI, you find the two pKa's that straddle the point at which you have no charge on your peptide. And in this case, it's the pKa 6.0 and the pKa 9.7. So what you do at this point is you just take the average of those two pKa's. And that gives you your PI 
which is the unique pH where this peptide will be overall neutral. So it's a characteristic of this unique peptide. Hopefully this clears some issues up. If you have more questions, please comment or let me know on Piazza.